Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to finish up my series on depth edge detection outlines by further optimizing them. I'll reduce the number of texture lookups and adjust the algorithm to depend on only one texture to get both depth and normals data. You might want to watch the previous videos on edge detection outlines to understand the underlying algorithm, although I'll set up the shader from scratch. Before I get started, I want to thank you all for watching. If you're new here, I upload weekly game development tutorials, so consider subscribing and turning on notifications. We also have a great Discord server to chat about game development. There's an invite link in the video description. I made this project using Unity 2020.2.1F1 and Universal Render Pipeline 10.2.2. If you're using Unity 2020.1, these outlines should still work, but your graph workflow will be a little different. If you're using a newer version, check the video description for any fixes that you may need. As mentioned before, my goal here is to further optimize edge detection outlines. To do so, I'll be using the per object outline system as a base, since it doesn't rely on post-processing and is thus the most efficient so far. The main difference will be that we'll get both normals and depth data from the depth normals texture, instead of relying on a separate depth texture. You may remember that the depth encoded into the depth normals texture is not very precise. That is true. Here I've exaggerated it, and you can really see banding, where all values share the same depth in the texture. Still, it may be precise enough to render outlines, and we can gain a lot by dropping a whole texture from the algorithm, so it's worth trying out. If you're working in a fresh project, set up the Universal Render Pipeline by downloading the package, creating a settings asset, and setting it as the active pipeline in your project settings. Select your pipeline asset and uncheck the depth texture. Then select your renderer settings asset and add a depth normals renderer feature. We wrote this feature back in the depth normals outlines video. And if you don't have it handy, you can download it from the video description here. This feature renders the depth normal texture for us. Also in the video description, grab the outlines include.hlsl file. This file contains code that our graph will call from a custom function to implement the Sobel edge detection algorithm. Also download the decode depth normals.hlsl file, which contains functions from the built-in renderer pipeline to decode normal and depth data from the depth normals texture. Before we start on the graph, let's remove some unneeded code from outlines include.hlsl. Open it in your script editor. Our first goal is to reduce the number of texture samples. If you remember back from the first video on edge detection outlines, each offset defined in this Sobel sample points array describes a texture sample offset from the central position. We would then use a multiplier called the convolution matrix weight and add all the products together. A higher sum would indicate an edge. Right now, we sample eight times per pixel. Let's reduce that to the four corners, so remove unneeded offsets. Next, we need to update the Sobel X matrix and Sobel Y matrix arrays. These hold the convolution matrix weights for each sample. You might notice, when you strip these down to the corners, that they match the values in the Sobel sample points array. We can just use the sample points offsets as the matrix weights. That's convenient. Delete the Sobel X matrix and Sobel Y matrix lists. Now delete depth Sobel and color Sobel functions, and modify the normal Sobel to also return a depth value. Rename it normals and depth Sobel, change the output arguments to a float normals and a float depth. Below that, add another float2 variable called depth Sobel and change the loop iteration count to 4. Since we're going to use Sobel sample point values as the matrix weight, set it here. Don't forget to also accumulate the depth Sobel value. Before exiting the function, change the out variable to normals and then set the depth to the length of the Sobel depth variable. And we're done with this file. Now let's write the graph. Back in Unity, create a subgraph called Outlines and open it. First, create a custom function to call normals and depth Sobel. Fill out all the settings to match those in the file. and then create a vector2 screen UV property and a float thickness property to fill its inputs. Create another subgraph called Sobel Fine Tuning and then open it. Here, we'll adjust the Sobel output value the same way as in past videos by applying a threshold, tightening, and strength transformation. 
Once that's done, save the asset and return to the outline's graph. Add two subtle fine tuning nodes, one for depth and one for normals, then create strength, tightening, and threshold properties for the depth and normals. Input everything into the fine tuning nodes, but remember that there's a lot we have to do to minimize various artifacts by adjusting the thresholds, so hold off on those. From this point forward, the graph will look a little different than the previous one. Remember how the depth value in the depth texture is stored non-linearly. Not so in the depth normals texture, it's actually stored linearly, where it's zero at the camera's near plane and one at the far plane. With that in mind, I bet you can probably think of some changes that you'll have to make. First off, create a custom function node to call the calculate depth normals function in outlines include. We'll use this throughout the graph. Let's tackle the depth threshold. It still has the acute angle artifact, so create a custom function node to call view direction from screen UV. Then calculate one minus the dot product of the view direction and the normal vector. I'm gonna take a slightly different approach here. Instead of defining a new threshold when dealing with acute angles, I'll just define a multiplier for the regular threshold. To implement this, add a smooth step node and a multiply node, then feed the threshold multiplier into that. Now, since depth is linear, we should not just multiply it with the threshold like we did before. In fact, depth starts to suffer from artifacts similar to normal outlines when it's far from the camera. Create a far depth start and a far depth threshold multiplier property. Then, when the depth is between the depth start and 1, we'll begin to apply the multiplier. Add the acute angle and far depth multipliers together, and then add 1, so that they never reduce the threshold. Finally, multiply the depth threshold and route that into the appropriate syllable fine-tuning node. Okay, let's turn our attention to the normals. The situation here is about the same as last time, except depth ranges from 0 to 1 instead of using world units. Create a far normal start depth and a far normal threshold multiplier property. Then grab the depth from the calculate depth normal custom function. Use a smooth step and multiply node to calculate the threshold multiplier. Add 1 and multiply with the normal threshold. Finally, output that into the other fine-tuning node. With all that done, take the maximum of both the tuned syllable values, and then output it. Save the asset. To test things out, create an unlit graph, and add an outline subgraph to it. Copy and paste all the properties from the subgraph into this test graph. Rename them appropriately, and then route them into the Outlines node. Add a base color and an Outlines color property. Then use a Blend node in Overwrite mode to blend the colors together, with the Outlines output as the opacity. Feed the results into the base color field of the master stack, and save the asset. Now in the Scene Editor, Create a test scene with a variety of shapes. Create an outlines material. Add the material to your meshes, and then start adjusting the material properties. Remember, it's always a good idea to adjust these properties using the game view, since outlines will look quite a bit different in the scene view. I'd also strongly suggest that you reduce the camera's far plane when using these outlines. Depending on your platform, depth values won't have much precision a fact that will only become more pronounced if your far plane is really distant. With less precision, the system won't be able to discern depth differences, and then it can't draw outlines. Take your time adjusting these outline settings, they can be quite finicky. Test your objects from various depths and angles to try to minimize artifacts as best you can. Don't be afraid to change values on an object-by-object -object basis.
Now, you can add the outline node to any unlit graph very easily. I've done it here with my Tune Shader graph. However, just like before, if you want to draw outlines on top of a lit graph, or any lit shader, you'll have to use a render object's renderer feature. The process is identical to the one showcased in the previous per object outlines video, so I'll refer you there for a step-by-step -step explanation. And with that, I think it's time to move on from depth and normal edge detection outlines. However, there are a couple of other techniques I'd like to try out, including one that gives the artist control over where outlines display, and another that's specialized for drawing extra thick outlines. If either of those ideas sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you won't miss the videos. Before I sign off, I want to take a minute to plug my Patreon page. First off, don't feel bad if you can't contribute. Watching these videos is really more than enough. But if you can, I have prepared a bunch of extra goodies, like voting power and topic polls, early video viewing, and downloadable tutorial project files. If you even consider it, I really appreciate the support. Liking this video also helps me a lot. It lets YouTube know to recommend the tutorial to others. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment here. I do read them all. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching, and make games.